Hey everyone, Synthetic Future here. Uh, welcome to the second part of my Lyot video series. So in the previous part I did a lot of talking, showed you some images from the manual. Today we're going into the DAW and we're going to cover all the basics of Lion. Uh, in the video after this we'll go into more advanced stuff and we'll check some presets and how they're made. So for now let's go into the DAW and uh, I'll see you in the other end. So right, here we are in Reaper. Uh, you might notice that line is quite big. It's actually fully scalable, so you can make it as small or big as you want. Just for legibility, let's make it nice and big. Uh, so let's start off with simply going over the main parts. I've already discussed in the previous video, but it's good to do a little refresher with the actual synth here. So in the top left, we have the two waveform generators. And right next to that is the mixer. Underneath the mixer we find the main um, filter, which is actually a filter over the two waveform generators. It does not filter the effects section. Uh, next to that is the main gain control. And this is also where you can mix in uh, the biome effects. Above that, we find the visualization. Of our signal. Uh, underneath the filter you find the effects section, uh, the biome section. And below the biome section is the modulator section. And all the way at the bottom you see the main controls where you can set up how many voices the synthesizer has. Uh, legato mode, oversampling, which I currently have set to four times. You have a general transpose and a tuning control where you can put this synthesizer in all sorts of tunings. So one important thing to notice with a Lion is as of right now it doesn't have any um, arpeggiator built-in uh, and it doesn't have a traditional sequencer built-in so it does have a sequencer modifier um, it's a gate sequencer where you can plug in the gates you can see the little ball for that signal uh, and it also has a step sequencer but it's a unmarked step sequencer so you can't really exactly set things you also can't record into it so I'm hoping that's something that will be added in the future. Um, Infield Audio did mention they were looking into it to see if they could do this. Uh, for the time being, of course, you can always use a external arpeggiator, uh, like for instance, if I can get a little bit of a shorter sound. Like for instance, I can use my uh, MPK uh, Mini. Or if you want to go the MIDI route, you can also use something like, uh, for instance, Blue Arp. You might want to use something that's a little bit more interesting, like for instance this. So there are options there. If you really want to sequence it, uh, you can use an external sequencer. Uh, hopefully we will see this feature added because I think a lot of people would like this in their synthesizers uh, but it's something that can be overcome so don't get too hung up on it um, because there's plenty of stuff that this thing can do um, and there are plenty of workarounds to get the sequencer or an arpeggiator going so that's a global overview of the, the parts of the synthesizer, so let's get into using it. And I think the most interesting part to start is the unison section. Uh, all the waveform generators can be set to unison, so that's quite powerful. You can also unison FM or uh, any of the other generators. So this is the forms generator, which is a, a blending oscilloscope which can go from a sine wave all the way to a square wave. So you start off with a sine wave. You can blend this into a triangle. And 
even on the other side of the blend you have your uh, sawtooth blending into a square wave. And then you can blend between the two oscillators. So for example, you can set it to sine and saw. Or square. So above here you find the unison control. And for starters, we're going to turn off the phase randomization. So all the notes are nice and unified and we'll use three times, four times, three times it is. And let's go for a pure square saw. So that's our saw in free unison mode. And now we have these uh, bar controls to set our unison values. So we can detune. And we can also change the blend for the unison part. And all these modulators, let's put it back to saw, can of course, or all these modifiers can be modulated as well. So let me just quickly get an LFO in here. So that's pretty cool. And uh, you can do this with any form. So we can even take the uh, FM synthesis. So I'm going to have to warn you that I'm not exceptionally good with uh, FM. We'll see what happens. That's unison on FM, and you can go all the way up to uh, eight unified voices. At which point, it pretty much turns into noise with these settings. Let's see if we can actually. So it doesn't always sound great, but at least it gives you a lot of uh, options. So let's see what happens if we play around with this one. So that's where you find the unison controls and both the generators have their own unison control, which can be set up independently. Now, uh, as said, there are a lot of um, different sorts of waveform generators going from the pretty standard stuff, uh, ring generators, wave folders, FM, uh, SuperSol, SuperSquare, Granero, experimental things. The simple ones are really the most basic of all. So this is just your saw, which is currently set to unison. And 
you can change the quantization if you want to into any of these modes. Of course, unison noise or just regular noise. With a built in filter, and I think I saw one. I, the foe sim is pretty cool. Let's just quickly. Put it into its base mix, most basic form. So it gives a lot of possibilities to create sounds even with one oscillator. You have a lot of control over your sound. So let's quickly take a look at the, the mixer, because that's one of the more interesting parts of the synthesizer. So for this we'll just use a uh, sawtooth. Going to bring down the attack a bit. There we go. And we bring in a second sawtooth which we are going to offset a little bit. So right now we're in fade mode. Equal fade mode. modulation mode and a comparator actually if you set both oscillators to the same and you max it out your sounds will be entirely gone there we go our uh, face randomization is on so now I'm inputting MIDI you can actually see it here we don't have any sounds because the waveforms are the same and if you start to manipulate one of the waveforms the difference will be leaking through. So that's actually pretty cool. And after that you get into the really weird sort of algorithms. This is pretty loud, let's reduce the gain a little bit, a little bit more. There we go. So I would pretty much say that you can read up on this in the manual, uh, but these uh, mixing forms are mostly just very experimental because even the manual uh, doesn't really fully explain what is going on here. So it's a, a really good cool tool for if you're going like, what should it sound like or what can it sound like? And just pick one of these, turn the dials. some 
bit based stuff which can become really like a bit crusher sort of mixing to be pretty aggressive so if you're going for really aggressive sounds this is definitely the place to be uh, let's just tune it down Ooh. actually let's just tune it down on the controller legato it's That's a really cool thing to play around with. Uh, we can also go to Ash. Which has its own little character. So these uh, first, I would say four are pretty basic kinds of summing and the last four can become really experimental. I would really advise you when you make a sound to at least flip over them and see what happens because that's what Lion is about in a lot of cases. It's about uh, making something pretty familiar and then trying to push it over the edge. Um, right, so that's your mixer session. You have your basic filter with a lot of filter modes. You can invert the filter if you want to. Resonance cutoff and drive, it's all pretty standard stuff. Um, so let's not spend too much time on there. Let's go into modulation. Um, so you get a macro session and uh, every little ball here is a point you can push a cable to. So you can just click it into anything, it will latch on. And with these controls, you can set how much the value will change. So right now it's maxed out, so I can turn it all the way from zero to max. Oh, this one's already somewhere. There we go. And if you limit this one to, let's say, 50%. Oh, this is actually off. My bad. This is 50%. And this is how all the, the macro controls actually work uh, for the modulations as well. So these control the amplitude being positive or negative and these little boxes are the outputs going into the inputs so what we have here is our MIDI input so if you play a note it will show up this is your master amplitude for the outputs we'll cover that in a little bit and here you can uh, basically take any of the, the MIDI outputs like the velocity or the modulation wheel, pitch, bend, aftertouch, uh, some MPE controls, timbre, voice count, gate, and re re release velocity. <laughs> that word wasn't working for me. Uh, and you can push them to something and we will use it in a little bit. Next that we have to master ADSR, which is of course pretty standard again let's just put this to 100 because we'll need it in a bit so we have our uh, attack ranging anywhere from instant to i believe that's actually 20 seconds decay sustain release going all the way from instance to 20 seconds which should be plenty long enough for most things uh, so let's uh, actually use some modulation here so we have an LFO here that's really basic stuff let's put it into the filter let's make it a little bit slower half time
And it's actually a good point to talk a little bit about the multi-mode, the, the poly mode. So curious, currently it's set to poly mode and you'll see when I play a note that a little line will show up in here. There it goes, little black line. That's the modulation for that specific note. So if I play more than one note, you will see all the lines representing those notes. And you can also set it to a mono. Where everything is going through one single uh, modulator and this can be set pretty much for every single modulator as well so you can really vary things up vary things up if you want to uh, there's tempo sync or just speed and you can set it to bipolar or mono so in bipolar mode it will oscillate down and up or you can set it to modulate in one direction which is either down or up depending on which one to use. So let's make it a little bit more interesting and let's say we want to synchronize this to our input. So we take our gate from our MIDI controller into the trigger of the LFO and then we can route this wherever we want to route it. So let's route it again to the filter cutoff because that's nice and easy. Put it pretty low and now if you play a note uh, it will trigger and reset this LFO. Let's actually set it to mono. Because that's easier to see. And we can change the phase. And we can do this with whatever we want to. You can also sum things up so we can add our master ADSR in here to positively affect it. Actually, let's load the release a little bit and lower this influence. So now the ADSR kicks in and from that point it will also oscillate. So this gives a lot of flexibility. You can also take one of these and go to multiple sources if you want to. That's going to be really loud. <laughs> you can do it. Uh, or you can take this, go into your amplitude, go into, uh, I don't know, let's go into the saw. And you can go absolutely bananas with this. So this is pretty useless. The routing works both ways, so you can also drag it from whatever you want to control this from and do it that way. Uh, I forgot the command for deleting wires. Oh, you can always drag them. So that is that. Now this modulation matrix is pretty much infinite. Um, if you want to, you can add as many modulators as you want. I mean, it's not entirely infinite, but this is a lot of modulators already. Uh, and any modulator can be any of uh, the many, many types of modulators that are in here. So, and you can, of course, use one LFO. Um, and use different settings from one LFO uh, route the same to multiple items. So you can really make pretty intricate webs of uh, modulation. And just to show you one is in here. Yep. So here you can see a fair bit of modulation happening with all sorts of different stuff. And the nice thing is you can actually see all the parameters which are moving here, which I think is a great feature. It's always good to have some visual feedback so you know what's going on. Uh, so this sound in specific is pretty weird.
Yeah, you can really go uh, whatever. <laughs> Witness you want to do. Which is really one of the strong points of, of Lion is it has a lot of uh, well, pretty much randomization over what is going on because there are so many modulators and you can route anything into anything. Um, and there's also, if you choose whatever, uh, let's do this. It's quite moody. So you can randomize within a preset. Now this is a pretty pet like preset. Might want to use something a little bit more aggressive. So there we go, that's pretty aggressive. So now it will keep all the routing you have in place. But change the parameters of all the parts. You also have some control over this, so you can tell it to randomize a certain amount or a whole lot. You can say it may only randomize the main controls for the effect row of the modulation row. If you put this pretty high, it becomes pretty weird. you are bound to run into a lot of weird drone-like effects sounds because random is sometimes good, quite often just weird. But that's good as well. I mean, uh, a synthesizer should not be limited to just doing a very specific saw sound or something. It's good to have some control and some randomness and be able to get a lot of sounds out of it because after all, uh, the more sounds it can make, the better value it is. Uh, this is a particularly weird one. I think it's pretty funny. It's almost like it's saying Duran Duran Duran. So that's what the preset is called. Um, yeah, so that's that's your basic controls with the oscillators. Let's do a little bit of FX because that's always cool as well. Let's go for a square wave, shorter attack, more squarey. You can activate any part with the little ball. You can also deactivate any part with the little ball icon. So if you want to turn off a certain uh, modulator, for instance, you've set up this modulator. And you wonder if that's a good thing or not, you can just turn it off. And hear it without the modulation. Uh, even if there's stuff after it, the stuff after it will still work and it will just cut off this one modulator. So that's neat as well. Uh, anyway, so we have a reverb here now. And once again, you can uh, do whatever you want, actually. You can take the master and say, I want to 
use that for our mixing value. And something that's nice to notice as well is uh, it will keep the shared modulators connected. So pretty much everything has a mix control. So once I change something here, let's say we change this into uh, a delay, the mix will stay attached because that's a shared control. So that's pretty nice. I actually want a distortion. So let's go sign. This is to give you a little bit of a feeling for how filters work. So you have a filter here. This is your master filter. But even though it's at really low, you still hear the distortion from this bit crusher, which is a high noise. So this is only affected by a filter behind it. So the filter that's up here only controls whatever is coming out of these oscillators and not what's coming out of the effects. So that's a good thing to keep in mind. If you have some overtones, you dial this down and you think, wait, it's still there. You want to add one of these basic ones. So yeah, that's uh, basically Lion in a nutshell with the controls and how you use it. So this was part two of the Lion video series. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to check me out on Instagram and uh, stay tuned for the third and final installment of this series where we cover some presets and where we uh, take some stuff apart to check out how it works. Okay, thank you for watching and uh, have a good day.